In this video I'm going to demonstrate the Baofeng DM860, also known as the DM1801, running the Open GD77 firmware. Now, I've made a couple of videos over the last two or three weeks documenting my uh, process of uh, analysing the differences between the Baofeng DM1801 and the GD77 and uh, in more and more detail in order to port the OpenGD77 firmware across onto the uh, DM1801. Uh, I'm now at the position to make a beta release really uh, of the uh, OpenGD77 for the uh, for the 1801. Uh, it still has some quirks about it. It's it's not perfect. It's generally functional though on both uh, DMR and on FM, and I'll uh, I'll go through some of the quirks in a minute. A uh, majority of the, the work in converting it across has actually been to try and map out the differences between the hardware on the DM1801 and uh, on the uh, GD77 and especially uh, the interconnections between the microcontroller chip in the radio and the rest of the peripherals in the radio. Uh, mainly things like the uh, Oh well, quite a, quite a few things were different on it. The uh, the LEDs for a start on the top here are not connected to the same uh, pins on the microcontroller. The uh, flash memory chip, uh, which is one megabyte in the GD77, and I believe is a two megabyte in this radio, uh, not connected on the same pins. Uh, the some control pins for the DMR chip also uh, not on the same connections to the GD77 and. Uh, and the PAs, uh, neither of the PAs were connected uh, onto the same pin, so uh, and those are the things I can think of off the top of my head which are uh, different uh, in terms of the hardware. It's also uh, got two additional keys, uh, obviously on the keypad on this, uh, there's the MR key and the, uh, the A-B, and uh, those uh, actually take the place uh, when I initially ran it of the uh, left and right arrows, but that's all been uh, remapped now. In fact, uh, thanks uh, Thanks to Daniel, uh, F1RMB, uh, for uh, helping to modify the code to uh, handle the mapping on those, which I'll, uh, I'll show you in a minute. So all, all of the uh, keys are now actually functional, uh, rather than uh, previously uh, things not being quite in the right place. I'd also uh, like to thank uh, a Chinese amateur who's also uh, taken several of his uh, DM1801s apart, that's uh, BG7IYN, uh, also known as uh, Jumbo77 on GitHub, so uh, I'd like to thank him as well for uh, taking his radios apart and trying to uh, work out which uh, pins connect through to where in the uh, the hardware on the uh, DM1801. Anyway, uh, enough really of the, the background. Uh, so I'll just give you a kind of a quick demonstration. Generally, it's all, as far as I'm aware, it's all working, except there are a few uh, quirks with it, which I've noticed, and uh, it's really not been tested by more. Uh, it's only been actually run by three people, myself, Daniel, and uh, by bg 7 iyn in China. So uh, only only three people tested this so far. So could have some other bugs, which we, uh, we haven't noticed. But anyway, I'm sure we can... Uh, Deal with those uh, when when we uh, find them and sort them out. Uh, turning on the radio, uh, pretty much the same as the GD77. Uh, on mine, I've actually uh, it's a configuration that you can do on the Open GD77 as well. I, I don't have a boot screen or any boot beeps; it just boots straight up. And actually, in this uh, version, which is the uh, going to be the same version rolled out to the GD77 as well, there was a uh, half a second delay. Uh, on the startup, which uh, seemed to sit, seemed to be for no reason whatsoever, it was uh, down for stabilisation. Uh, but uh, I think because we we do so much more on the initialisation now on the radio, it just just wasn't necessary to uh, have it sitting doing nothing for another half a second. It's really not that noticeable. But uh, if I turn it off and then kind of turn it back on, basically the radio is there just straight away. There's absolutely no waiting on this radio for it to uh, to boot up really comes up uh, pretty quickly and the same thing will be on the Open GD77. Uh, all the functionality is generally the same. 
between the two. The the only differences are in that because this radio's got this uh, VFO slash MR button and the uh, VFO AB button, that allows us to actually uh, do things a little bit differently. In the uh, OpenGD77 to switch between uh, VFO and uh, A and VFO B. Now at the moment this is R B and V and sorry R B and T B meaning we're on uh, VFO B. Now on the uh, OpenGD77 if you want to switch VFOs you have to push the uh, the orange button and then that will bring uh, up the quick menu and show you're on VFO A and if you hit it it'll uh, switch you to the other VFO so you just have to push the orange button twice to flick between uh, VFO A and VFO B but on the uh, DM1801 seeing it's actually got a key marked A slash B which we presume is uh, for switching the uh, VFOs uh, that now changes over uh, between VFO A and uh, VFO B, which is quite nice. Uh, you know, it's it's not a big thing, but we might as well make the use of the key. Uh, also, uh, because it's got a uh, VFO slash MR button, rather than the red key on the GD77, pushing the uh, MR key there uh, switches between the VFO and the uh, the channel screen there. So uh, that's doing the the job of the uh, red key. Uh, and because the, uh, uh, going back to the VFO a minute, I keep still getting this wrong because I'm used to using the GD77 all the time. Uh, because there's no VFO AB, uh, when I press the orange button, uh, it's similar on both screens now. Sorry, it's similar on the VFO to the, uh, to the channel screen. That If you push the orange button, uh, it, it takes you to the scan option. So you can actually press the orange button again like you can in the... Uh, the uh, channel screen and that will start scanning. Assume you've got all the scanning parameters set up, which I'm, I'm not going to uh, go through now because that will be uh, subject of another video. And to be honest, I want to redesign the uh, uh, VFO scanning because I find the user interface uh, a little bit uh, complicated and uh, not particularly user friendly. Anyway, so uh, so that's the kind of key differences uh, in terms of the the general operation. It, once you're on the uh, there we go, that's working. Yeah, let's push that button. Uh, this one, of course, doesn't have a blue button on the side. The, the function button is, is the lower of the two buttons, uh, but unfortunately on the uh, this radio it's not colour-coded in a different colour, so uh, we're going to have to call that the uh, the blue slash uh, kind of down arrow, I don't know, left. So I think it's technically called SK, uh, SK2. I think the buttons on the side are actually technically called, called SK1 and SK2. I forget what the orange one's called. SK3 possibly, but anyway, it's orange on both radios, so it's just easier to call it the orange uh, button. Anyway, so uh, if I was to transmit, I'm actually going to go on to uh, talk group 9990 and just do a parrot test because there's actually no activity on uh, that repeater, and I will also change repeaters. Uh, no, it's probably okay. That's not the strongest repeater for me, so I'm just going to... Uh, uh, go to a different repeater, RDR. That's a better repeater for me, so I'm just going to do a parrot test on uh, RDR and just see how that goes. One, two, three, four, five. This is VK3KYY parrot test open GD77 on the Barafang 1801. One, two, three, four, five. This is VK3KYY parrot test open GD77 on the Barafang 1801. So, uh, so that's basically working the same. Uh, what I'm using here, actually, I'm using an external uh, speaker mic, which I've got plugged in here. It's actually something I've made myself. I'll just kind of pan the camera across and just take a look. Of, uh, actually, I bought a PC speaker. This is really independent of anything else. I bought two speaker mics and a PC speaker, and I've kind of made it into, um, mashed the three together, as it were, and, uh, and made myself quite... Uh, decent external speaker on it which sounds way better than the speaker mics anyway back to the radio so that explains that oh uh, if you can see some other little, tiny little wires sticking out here because at the moment I've still got a debugger connection uh, wires coming out through the plug in the side and I've just pushed those out of the way at the moment I can still use the radio but it means I can also directly uh, program uh, the radio from the computer and also debug it and do live debugging on the on the radio uh, so that, that's the DMR operation. Uh, I'll try and uh, see if there's anybody on uh, FM. So if I uh, change zone 
Hmm, try and find somebody on uh, like on FM on two meters, see if there's anything on it. FM on two meters, actually I might as well just do a scan. Probably no activity this time of day. No, there's nothing on 70, uh, 70 centimeters. Anyway, I'll pause the scan. Now, one of the bugs at the moment uh, is that uh, in FM, every time it does a beep, it's getting the hiss actually from the uh, unsquelched uh, FM receiver chip. So if I uh, if I push the down button, it will beep. And I don't know if you can hear whether that's coming out through the uh, through the speaker, but I'll try again. Yeah, I'll turn it up a bit. So it is kind of beeping, but you're getting this uh, bit of a hiss. Now that doesn't occur on FM, basically. So sorry on uh, on DMR. So my guess at the moment, so there it is on on DMR. So on DMR, it's uh, you can hear the beep. I've actually turned the beep volume down. Uh, but uh, yeah, that still needs to be resolved. It's not the end of the world, but yeah, there's something uh, weird going on. There, there is a key difference between the hardware on this radio, as I uh, said in one of the previous videos. The uh, audio amplifier chip isn't the same chip, and the uh, the one in the GD77 has got a built-in uh, enable control uh, pin that goes into it. And uh, however, this radio uh, uses uh, a different uh, forget exactly the model number, it's a TDA2 something, uh, which apparently is potentially the same as the audio amp used in the uh, MD380, <coughs> excuse me, but uh, they have to use an external transistor to uh, turn the power on and off to the whole audio amplifier and maybe uh, potentially it's not turning on and off as quickly as the GD77 and consequently there's some squelch noise coming back through. Now we can probably fix that, maybe put in a small delay or something on the DM1801 so it uh, uh, maybe holds on the uh, the beep tone uh, input into the amplifier for long longer and then it doesn't uh, doesn't turn off, well it turns off the amplifier and then uh, <coughs> excuse me a short time later switches over the uh, the input back to the FM chip potentially, I don't, I don't really know. Anyway, it's it's not a big deal, but uh, that's going to have to be investigated to uh, to fix that problem. Uh, the other problem that I did have, but I've just resolved, is that I found that I was getting a, a high pitch whining noise uh, all the time when I was uh, listening to a signal, and then I realised that the uh, the high pitch whining sound turns off when the uh, display turns off. And I was actually hearing the pulse width modulation that I used to control the intensity of the display because it was set to uh, uh, 2.4 kilohertz. So I've had to change that up to 10 kilohertz. Now that was never a problem on the GD77. So mm, it does imply that the uh, the audio amplifier system is not as a noise immune uh, as the one in the uh, GD77. I think generally. Uh, from what I've, well, I, I can't speculate on the RF quality uh, of these radios, but uh, so far in terms of the audio quality doesn't appear to be as good, uh, at least not out through the speaker anyway. Uh, I mean, I've spoken to a few people on DMR and they've uh, they've said it's, uh, it's all working fine. The other problem, which I guess could be a fairly major problem for some people, is uh, this radio has never worked, even with the official uh, firmware, it's never worked through my hotspot. And... Uh, even with the OpenGD77 firmware installed, I can't get it to work on my hotspot, uh, which is a Pi Star uh, MMDVM based hotspot. I can't get it to work uh, on a hotspot in either simplex or duplex mode. Now, my guess is potentially the calibration is wrong in the radio. Uh, I've looked at the calibration table and it does seem to be significantly different to the, uh, sorry, not the, the, well, the data in the table and uh, some of the transmit values uh, that used to control the uh, DMR modulation appear to be considerably different from the uh, GD77 one. So uh, it could just be a question of actually uh, changing those values to try and bring them in line with what I'd expect to see on a GD77. But uh, yeah, uh, I mean, the, the, if, if the radio just uh, never did it, then th there could well be uh, other problems in terms of the uh, the RF uh, output purity. It's a little bit hard to know. But it, it definitely works fine through uh, DMR repeaters. It also works uh, fine on FM as well. 
in terms of the power output, I have tested the power output when I uh, first uh, tried it. I found that the uh, the one watt setting was giving me uh, over two watts, and uh, I thought, oh, okay, maybe maybe the uh, maybe the power amplifier is just more efficient on this uh, radio. So I switched it to five watts, but I, I wasn't getting five watts. I was only getting four point five watts or something. So really, it's just the calibration uh, of the power in the radio uh, was completely wrong. So uh, now, in order at the I'm still working on the CPS in order that the calibration can be adjusted on these radios. Uh, what I've done is I've actually modified uh, the location of the calibration table in both the OpenGD77 and this radio so that uh, the firmware automatically copies the firmware into a uh, uh, the same address in memory such that then the uh, CPS will be able to use it in that address. However, I need to now release a new version of the CPS that allows uh, that new address to be accessed. The other thing that this will do actually with the uh, calibration is uh, because I'm effectively moving the calibration. It was sitting stacks almost smack bang in the middle of the one megabyte memory chip or in this case the two megabyte memory chip. Uh, but uh, because I moved it down and it's no longer in the middle of the, uh, the memory range that should allow uh, a larger portion of the memory to be used because for the DMRID uh, it will be at the expense of making it more difficult to go back to the official firmware because you would have to back up the flash memory chip before you do that because otherwise uh, you're going to be losing data that the official firmware has used mainly things like the font for the display whereas the OpenGD77 uses uh, font built into the firmware uh, apart from that really you know kind of everything is the same uh, sorry wrong button well, that's the same, all the menus are the same, really, really no difference. Oh, this popping sound uh, you're getting, the GD77 does that as well. It just seems to be driving an external speaker, just doesn't uh, go very well. I'm just going to actually, uh, hang on a second, I'm just going to come out of that and uh, I'll turn it off, pull this plug out. Turn the puller speaker mic plug out, get my blue tack out of the way that's holding the wires in place. There we go. Turn it back on. So, I mean, through. Through the internal speaker, it's fine. Actually, I'll switch this to FM. I'll just uh, hear that. Uh, uh, sorry, trying to switch into FM and not succeeding there. Go to FM. Oh, so I'm changing channel. Sorry, it's going back into another FM channel. So that's uh, useless. Sorry, another DMR channel. Yeah, it's still doing the same that same noise through the speaker that it does uh, through my external speaker. So. Uh, yeah, it's not really the external speaker's not the problem. And the the, uh, the GD77 does the same thing with that popping sound through the external speaker. It's just that these radios, uh, in terms of the electronics, it's not really designed to uh, drive the external speaker correctly. Anyway, rest of the screen's pretty much the uh, the same as on the, uh, the Open GD77. Etc. the contacts. I don't know what's in the contact list. I just the... Uh, Usual stuff. So all, all pretty much the uh, pretty much the same. Last heard. Uh, I think I'm. Oh, I reset it a minute ago. So uh, I guess the only thing I'm going to have to do is is potentially change this to open uh, DM uh, 1801. Really, but uh, apart from that, generally uh, generally quite functional.